All right. So let us talk about why we need industrial switches. What is how industrial switches make themselves different than the commercial switches? The first thing which makes them different is that this they design for the suitable outdoor enabling cabinet environment. Outdoor environment means that is always the temperature which is above 40 uh, 45 degrees Celsius. Because whenever you install the switches in the indoor environment, they always uh, have 18 to 9 uh, temperature control environment and they install in 18 to 19 degrees Celsius temperature maximum. But when you talk about the uh, when you talk about the switches for the outdoor deployment, then those switches actually be placed in the outdoor cabinet or rack enclosure. And these rack enclosures inside temperature is more than the outside temperature. So, for example, if your temperature outside is 45, 40 degrees Celsius temperature, then your temperature inside the rack would be always 50 to 45 to 50 degrees Celsius temperature. So that is the that is the reason whenever there is an outdoor you need industrial switches because industrial switches ASICs and if you compare ASIC, ASIC means chipset. Industrial grade chipsets are are completely different than the commercial grade switches. Okay, multiple mounting options help efficient use of outside cabinet space because these switches, industrial switches are specifically designed to use to make use of the low space. Okay, because that, that is the reason they are basically posted on the uh, DI drill bomb. So in case of so they are actually they are two to two U to three U space and in that two U to three U space you will find six to seven industrial grade are mounted on the DI drill. Whereas if you go for the commercial, then you need at least for the same thing you need six U space, sixty to sixty to eight U space you need for that kind of development. So they will definitely save your space. Second thing, they are designed for the high redundancy because because industrial switches are specifically designed and used in the critical environment. They use in CCTV surveillance. They use in uh, they use in manufacturing. So they design for the high highly critical environment and that is the reason they support dual redundant power so that if one of the power fails another power can take over they also support reprotection with less than 20 millisecond uh, failover so if one of the primary link fail then the secondary link can take over in less than 20 millisecond so that is the advantage of being the industrial switch so in case of the commercial switches if you see you will with ERPS protocol you can get like less than 50 millisecond yeah, latency or link conversions. So the good uh, again, as I said, uh, they, are, they are designed to resistance to the temperature between minus 20 to 70 degrees Celsius. Whereas commercial switches are basically designed for uh, 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. They are basically shock and the vibration resistance so that we, they can make effective use in automation. So like you know, like for example, in railways or in kind of in a vehicle automation, if you put the industrial switches, those switches are basically designed and they can sustain low vibration, they sustain free fall. So the link industry which has basically complied to all the standards IEC 66100 uh, series, which actually talks about uh, free fall, which talks about yeah, EMI, EMC. Apart from that, industry which switches are IP30 rated, they, uh, they provide ingress, ingress protection. They talk about uh, industrial grid also support reverse polarity protection. This supports quality of service for them to prioritize sensitivity traffic or voice traffic. So whatever things you want to prioritize. Apart from that, they are energy efficient. And the subsequent good thing is that they are fanless in design. They don't have a fan. So you are again reducing the maintenance because there is no fan in this usage. There is no fan because, because uh, there is no fan because they actually design their ASIC is actually designed to sustain in minus seven, uh, up to 70 degrees Celsius temperature. The same thing that we talk about, uh, but the good thing that I want to talk here is uh, that it is a rack mount. They uh, support DI and trail mount, they, are, they also support DI and rack mount. So rack mount also you can put it, and uh, wheel mount also you can put as per as your applications. Uh, uh, one more thing is that they support high EMC. High EMC is nothing but it's a like kind of EMC. It, uh, if you have higher EMC, then it will support EMI interference. And that is the reason they, are, they, they support high EMC. Uh, this is called IP30, as we already talked. Okay. Apart from that, uh, as we talked, that they, they support minus 20 to 70 degrees Celsius temperature, and they are finally in design. 
this is the one of the network which talks about corporate office and the smart factory but uh, before going forward from here i would like to understand uh, from you about your queries you, if you have any queries please uh, raise your hand any queries so far can you can you hear me clearly yes we can hear you yeah. okay so kushal said uh, yes i can hear me clearly so ji kushal shiva rama krishna actually i want this session to be more uh, you know uh, more interactive so if you have any queries if, and if you uh if you ask those queries it will make helpful to both of us it will help you to resolve your queries your doubts and it will help me to uh it will help me to give a one more query yeah yes siddhi kali what is the doubt siddhi unmute okay siddiqui if you have any doubts please uh, speak up we have already unmuted you okay so uh, so uh, so it is uh, let's talk about industrial and the commercial uh, network so i mean this is the design which the first network talks about the corporate office and the second it will talk about the smart factory the uh, the reason i chose smart factory because industrial let's switch is are basically used for the outdoor deployment and the hard deployment okay now hard deployment where you will find you will find in the manufacturing unit you know where cars are getting manufactured where uh, things like for example any like a tv unit or any uh, fridge or any kind of things which are getting manufactured manufacturing plant and those plant the out they uh, those plant the temperature is like very high is uh, surrounding temperature is very high and that is the reason i choose about the smart factory and smart factory is also one of the uh, one of the place where industries which are used very heavily yes rama singh yes rama we are unmuted you yes speak up rama Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Okay, Rama. You can put. Uh, we are not able to uh, hear you. Can you put your query on in the comment section? We will respond you. Okay. So the uh, so the uh, so the network we can see here is a network. commercial versus industrial a commercial network basically talks about our regular land you know where your access points where your vip phones where your desktop laptops are basically connected uh, directly to the switch or through wireless and then this to access switches are connected to distribution or the core switch core switch in turn connects to firewall which is in turn connected to the internet and thus thus uh, all connected edge devices are basically connected to the internet but smart factory basically talks about actuators smart factory talks about the sensors smart smart factory talks about the connectivity yeah. in the harsh environment Hello. and that is what it is shown here if you can see it is uh, connected to cctv it is connected to the machines that like robotic machines okay we got the uh, uh, question from ravi singh what about the industrial switches humidity environmental conditions okay we will come to that uh ravi uh, it's a uh, is then the we are covering the same the upcoming slides okay apart from that it will uh, as uh, it uh, uh apart from that uh, we talk about uh, scada connectivity scada and the plc plc is nothing but programmable logic controller controller which connect to the machines see basically i will just give an idea machine is something like for example there is a uh, there is a company which manufacture doll 
okay now if the dolls are getting manufactured okay every doll uh, there are 100 dolls are getting counted every minute okay so this is the machine so what is the job of scada plc they basically count the number of dolls which are basically uh, manufacturing in the factory okay so every one minute every one minute this machine this scada will send an information to the uh, to the industrial switch via mod bus okay our property net okay and this industrial switch in turn send the information to the crm server or uh, it will send the information to the uh, to the uh, software which record this count okay they uh, record the count every minute like this minute uh, at the uh, first minute the count is 100 at the second minute count is 99 at the third minute count is 100 so this is what basically talk uh, in the sense which is using the smart factory okay, so now uh, in the smart factory as as uh, the as the temperature and humidity basically uh, it is much um, compared to uh, compared to normal commercial environment and that is the reason we talk about always talk about smart factory so smart factory has the difference basically corporate and this smart factory talks about in smart uh, in corporate we talk about uh, temperature control environment whereas in smart factory we talk about the temperature which might cross 50 degree 60 degree you know so that environment apart from that and similarly 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 like smart factory they uh, there is an application like industrial auto, industrial automation railways oil and gas substation that electric substation okay. so these are these all are basically uh, these all are basically industries these all are basically all basically talk about high environmental temperature they all talk about uh, um, 50 degrees celsius temperature 55 degrees celsius temperature mm -hmm. so whenever whenever basically uh, you temperature cross 45 degrees celsius or 50 degrees celsius i would suggest to you to go for the yeah. industrial rate switches mm -hmm. though though people talk though there are many oem who, who talks about uh, uh, switches commercial switches with the 50 degrees celsius temperature okay and yes the commercial switches those of those support 50 degrees Celsius temperature also, but in long run, if you need your, uh, if you need your network to be more stable, more uh, efficient, then I think we should go with the industrial industrial uh, switch deployment in this case. Similarly, uh, like in cities and town also, if you talk about uh, smart cities, smart city may you talk about you must be knowing that smart cities are basically deploy. Smart cities are basically deploy. Just a minute. So similarly, uh, similarly, if we talk about industries, industries like the railways, automation, and oil and gas, we just talk. Now let's talk about cities and towns because as all of us know that cities are also getting smart. So when we talk about smart city, smart city always deliver uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, they always deliver city surveillance. You must be knowing that uh, in every junction there are cameras are placed, okay? And these cameras are actually uh, monitoring every vehicle which is going through the junction, through the uh, signal, you know, or through the toll. So this this way, basically, basically, cities government is planning to make the city more secure and be more safe. Okay, and similarly, at the same time, they also uh, they also put the systems in place which actually ask which actually ask that all vehicles on the road should maintain should follow some rules. You know, like that's the reason you all of us are today. You must be knowing that whenever you are crossing the signal okay wrong wrongly you will get chalan at home or you will get chalan at on your phone okay so that these systems are basically interconnected with the servers and the camera is efficient to capture this information and send to the uh, chalan server chalan server they automatically connected your uh, your phone with the sms gateway and uh, in thus when you cross the signal without uh, wrongly actually so that time you will get SMS that you have crossed the signal, you have to pay the fine of rupees fine difference. So the cities are basically first using uh, technology to generate the revenue. Uh, they also, in this way, they are also disciplining the people and they also making the cities safe and secure. Uh, we, uh, at the same time, city Wi-Fi, city 
the uh, city uh, like the ITMS integrated traffic management system. These are all part of the citizen town. And in both the applications, industry design, citizen town, you have to go with the with the industrial grid solution because of the applications, because of the outdoor applications. Now, since uh, since we talk about power over internet, since we are talking about uh, powering on the uh, access point, or you are know, talking about powering on the IP cameras. So, whenever we talk about the POE, POE are basically two types, or uh, type one and type two. Type one, which is eight zero to the AF standard, deliver up to fifteen watt power to the PD devices, and the type two deliver up to thirty watt of power to the devices. Now, basically, if we talk about the camera. CCTV camera, there are two megapixel, five megapixel, eight megapixel camera, which is not require more than uh, more than 10 watt, 15 watt of power. But you talk about the access point, then access point need 20 watt, 25 watt, or 30 watt of power. So basically, so basically, uh, the link industrial switch they both support PoE and the PoE plus uh, connectivity to power on this uh, uh, VoIP phone, CCTV cameras, access points, and all. So, you, so in this way, basically there are some access control or there are some actuators, which are actuators are is the device which basically control the actions of sensors. So whenever there is a sensor and when, whenever there is a trigger of the sensor, actuator will uh, actuator will sense that trigger and take the necessary action with the help of industrial grid switch. So that is the technology behind uh, and the working of industrial switch behind uh, power or ethernet. So now there are basically two types of uh, uh, PoE features. You know, like if you talk about the normal PoE, normal PoE may what happen? Like whenever, uh, when, uh, if you if you put the switch, okay, then normal PoE switch, they will it will it will first put uh, it will first do for a power on cell test, then it will do the booting process, then it will uh, check all the functions with the water of timers uh, of the switches. Then finally, it will on the switch fully function and then it will power, it will give power to the ports. So, so by the time when the switch on, okay, it will take at least a minute to power on the switch or to power on the PD devices. PD device means power devices like CCTV, IHS points. Kind of. So the advantage of uh, persistent PoE and the instant PoE, these two features actually help to give instant power to the PD device. Like for example, in case of instant or instant PoE, what happens whenever we will power on the switch? His job is to without by his job is to bypass all the steps and to first give power to the PD devices. That is the job of this the feature, instant PoE or the fast PoE. I hope you understand. The second thing about the persistent or continuous PoE. For the continuous PoE, what it does, like for example, let us say the switch is functioning, okay, and the camera is connected to, to the switch. Now you have upgraded, you have upgraded the firmware of the switch. Now you must be all of us knowing that whenever you upgrade the firmware of the switch, it has to power on restart. The, we have to restart the switch so that new firmware will take place the uh, functionality. Now, when you restart the switch, okay, it will give, it will not discourage the PoE at all. It will not discourage the PoE, okay, but rather than it will reboot itself, but when it will reboot itself, it will not touch, uh, it will not discourage the uh, CCTV devices, it will uh, continuously supply power to the device. That is the advantage of the persistent PoE or the continuous PoE. So during switch supports both the instant PoE and the persistent PoE feature. It will help you a lot in uh, basically in the critical deployment like voice and the uh, uh, CCTV deployment. Now uh, there is another uh, protocol and which is very important like high availability. Like uh, in this in this uh, diagram we can see that there are there is a link with of the industrial switches and the industrial switches are basically connected with the uh, CCTV cameras, uh, roto robots, robotic machines, you will find in industrial automation plant. So these things are connected in a ring. So what happened now, whenever there is a fiber cut, the, now see every switch has active link, okay. 
but if one of the link fails then another link should be taken care less than 15 millisecond okay yes uh, please go okay so another another link will take care in less than 15 milliseconds that is the advantage of uh, erps ethernet ring protection switching because there is a link convergence of less than 15 millisecond now why erps erps basically it is a open standard protocol uh, which talks the which uh, communicate between the d link and the other oems so either it, whether it is uh, any other oem the d link switch will communicate with that oem that switch on erps protocol in less uh, which will give less than 15 millisecond link conversions now the look uh, like uh, uh, the what we saw is a single ring and what we see here is a dual ring okay so the ring will the ring industrial switch will also support dual ring architecture it will give subsequent uh, failover it will give subsequent path from the if one of the ring fails another link will take over and uh, whether it is location to location whether it is a multi location connectivity or single location connectivity it will give continuous supply it will give continuous connectivity to the ip surveillance to transportation to voip or to command and control center so so that edge devices should will always be connected to the main devices to the command and control center now the good uh, one more thing is that whenever there is a uh, though we have some deployment guideline which will come uh, which will come at the last which will have defined those guidelines which will help you for uh, at the time, during the deployment but uh, i would also like to highlight here uh, the one thing is a search protection search protection by because whenever any device whether it is a cctv whether it is uh, whether it is sensors or whether it is access points it needs it needs cable to power on those device it needs poe to power on the device okay because whenever the for example when you deploy cctv camera at the field okay at the outdoor how you will power on power on it either you have dc power supply okay you can power on it to dc power supply to the adapter but adapter is again a single point of failure so like for example if you have hundreds of cctv camera then you cannot Uh, power on hundreds of cctv camera on the on the basis of adapter because adapter is a single point of failure right so so that is the reason we always suggest outdoor deployment to power on with the power uh, to power on with the poe switch now for this kind of devices if we power on the this devices with the help of poe switch then what happens during the lightning okay if there is a surge which comes on the camera then the camera will pass the same surge to the switch because the connectivity between the camera and the switch is a copper connectivity and copper is a current carrying uh, device right so whenever there is a lightning lightning will pass through the switch with the help of coppers and it will help it will also damage the switch it will damage camera but it will also damage the switch and maybe if this switch again pass the surge to the next device then then there are, there are chances that your uh, your subsequent devices which are connected to the switch will also get damaged and that is the reason that is the reason we what we have is the surge protection built in into, into the switch and we also have surge protectors so we always recommend to use poe switch with a high surge protection and this search protector search protection uh, is a external device and the uh, switch also have immediate search protection yes now as i said as i said the industrial switches are power on with the multiple power device uh, multiple devices so it is basically high redundancy design with the alarm okay like uh, we can see in the first picture whereas uh, industrial switches support two power supply to power on the device so if one of the power supply fail another power supply is there to take care of it right so uh, why you uh, why there is a possibility of creating the another power supply because industrial switches are basically designed to deploy in the critical critical deployment 
Like for example, if you have CCTV connectivity, CCTV perimeter surveillance, then if one of the power supply failed, there must be another power to take care of the first power supply. And that, is, that, that actually happens in subsequent. In a very short time, uh, switch will not even know that this uh, there is second power supply. It will give continuous power to the uh, switch in case of one of power fail, one of the power fails. Now, apart from that, there is a good thing that there is a uh, alarm. Like uh, like you can, there is an alarm input output uh, ports on the switch. You can always connect uh, sensors to the alarm so that, for example, if uh, if someone is passing through the sensors, the sensors says that. And it will start the alarm. So you can put any kind of alarm. You can put the siren also, so that the siren will start uh, start uh, shouting and it will give you a big sound, so that you know it will help you out. So that is a way. It will always always help you to convince your customer. It will always help you to convince your customer, your partners, uh, for the best solution uh, design. Okay, I can see there are some queries. There are some people who are raising their hands. We'll uh, we'll take these queries one by one in uh, at the end of the session. Okay. Now, uh, apart from that, technology feature sets we can see uh, the we can see that our switch dealing switches do support uh, do support TLI. They support support IP for IP IPv6. They support link layer discovery protocol so that they can easily manage easily discovering the DBU network management system. Okay. Apart from that, uh, we can always have a remote management of the switches, secure river remote management with the help of HTTPS, SSH. They support SSH, SSH P2. They support TLS so that you can go extra mile and have better security over the internet. So even though you are managing these device, devices over the internet or over the uh, over the uh, remote location, the connectivity will be secure. That is the uh, uh, basically things which I would like to highlight here. Apart from that, uh, if you want uh, the switch port to be more secure, then uh, we do support H0.2.1x, we support port security, we support MAC authentication and the access control list. So dot one x is nothing but uh, to place more secure protocol which makes your network secure with the help of the, uh, with the help of the certificate. Like for example, if your company issues some certificate, then nobody in the nobody else can log in to the switch without the help of that certificate. So that is the advantage of having user two dot one x in this uh, uh, supported in the switches. Apart as I apart from that, as I said, power supply, ERPS, uh, there is always uh, things for the uh, redundancy which make the switch redundant and more reliable for the long term communication. Okay, now I think uh, I have uh, hardly, hardly one or two slides apart from uh, from here. The, today the people are talking more about the uh, network automation. Like for example, let us say you have uh, let us say you have 50 switches. Okay, and uh, you need to com you need to enable HTTP spanning tree protocol in all 50 switches. What you will do? You will log into each switch and you will change the HTTP setting from disable to enable. Right. But the good thing is that with the help of network automation, what happened if, if you uh, if uh, you have basic knowledge of coding, okay, if you have basic knowledge of Java or PHP, you can always write the script in the PHP or Java, and you can run that script from uh, from a network, and this script will be, will be applicable in all 50 switches. So this is the automate in this way you are actually automating your network. You are not logging to each switch individually and changing your changing the setting, but you always uh, have a leverage. You always have advantage of writing the script and deploy that script in all 50, 50 location or 100 location or 500 location. So the, I just given you example of uh, STP, but uh, you can do poor configuration even with the help of the switch. Yeah, even with the help of the config automation. So the link switches do support network automation. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it will help you out uh, to deploy the long deploy in last network. Now uh, from here, uh, I, uh, my uh, colleague Ujwal Nikam, he will help you out uh, with the product positioning of industrial switches. Okay, 
Now, though, as you know, all of us, as you all must be knowing that during uh, and end to end solutions, starting with this switching, industrial switching, wireless, uh, structural cabling, network enclosure, we have complete end to end solutions. So, uh, so this understanding this solution and uh, understanding the products positioning is very important. So, usually we'll uh, take care, uh, take usually take take it from forward, and we will uh, help you to help us to understand which product to be deployed at what site. And finally, he will also give you some guideline which uh, help you in deployment of the switching in the switch switch. So over to usual. Thank you, Sunil sir. So, uh, as our agenda is today, agenda is on industrial switching. So, we are just uh, go through the industrial switching product portfolio. We'll not go through to the commercial switches and uh, wireless controller access point product portfolio. We just focus on the industrial switching product portfolio. So, this is a complete whole product portfolio which we have in the dealing. Uh, bucket. So, uh, starting from uh, on the extreme left, we have L3 managed switches that is DGS F3600 series, uh, which is a layer 3 fully managed industrial switch. Then we have uh, DGS F3700 series that is a, also a layer 3 managed switch that comes under DIN rail mounting options. Then we have layer two rack mountable switch that is DGS F3400 series. And similar, we have a DIS 700 series, which is a fixed port uh, rack mountable switch that is a layer two rack mountable switch. In manage, in layer two manage category, which under DIN rail mounting, we have DGS F3000 series where we have four port, eight port options. It goes up to 16 and 20 port max. And similarly, we have uh, DIS 300 and DIS 200 series. And in 10 by 100, we can get in uh, uh, in the series of DS F3200 series, where we can get four port, eight port, 12 port options under F3200 series, which is a DIN rail mount. Also, we have unmanaged series switches where we have DGS F1000 series and DIS 100G series where came in 8 port and uh, 6 port and 8 port options. Also, we have media converters which converts fiber to Ethernet, uh, Ethernet to fiber conversion, multi-mode, single mode and uh, SFP slot media converters. With all these, we have network management software that is DVU8 which can help to centralize the management of the all your networking devices using SNMP protocol. So we will go one by one on the uh, all the, these different products. Before that, we have to understand what the standards, industrial uh, certification standards are there, what are the automation protocols. So, for the power substations, there are standard called as IEC 61850-3 is a mandatory. So our we have few models which complies to this IEC 61850-3. Then for the railway, there is standard called EN50155 or EN50121. So we have our unmanaged switches are uh, complied to these standards. Then NEMA TS2 is also one of the uh, prime certification which is must for the industrial switches and uh, we are we can confirm that our all managed switches are NEMA TS2 complied and we have certification. ATEX is also one of the certification which is a corrosion uh, corrosion uh, certified corrosion uh, certified about what the corrosion level can support it in the product. Automation protocols we have Ethernet IP, Propinet, Podbus, TCP. So these are the these are the protocols which are used uh, and, uh, for in the industries, industrial environment where different type of PLCs and devices are need to connect. 
then we have ptp protocol that is pcn time protocol so in commercial it suggests we use a uh, uh, sntp or ntp that uh, synchronize the time with the clock of millisecond but in ptp this is it is a as these switches are deployed in a critical environment where the each uh, the, the time synchronization is very 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 much important and the, for the criticalness it should be in the nanosecond so it's hardware based protocol ptp which is supported in our industrial switches so this is one of the more uh, important point to be considered then these are the standards which comes under uh, uh, industrial switches safety for uh, safety we have ul then we have emc and then shock and vibration so shock vibration drop we have uh, military standard it was 0-f as well as some of the switches are ic standards so both are equivalent uh, we can uh, we can comply to both the standards now moving to the product portfolio we have uh, in uh, l3 managed switch as a, our rack mountable l3 managed switch is dgs f3600 so this is a modular switch so it comes with three open slots and fixed uh, for 1g sfp port option or for 10g sfp port sfp plus port option that are uplink ports and three open slots so in that open slots we can insert eight port 1gbps uh, copper module or 1gbps fiber module or we can connect eight gbps 8 port 1 gbps uh, poe module so we can use this switch as a poe switch also but we need to give a different uh, external dc power supply if we want to use the poe in, in terms of uh, uh, we, uh, we have highlighted this in the right right corner uh, on the top that we have a different power supply options so this this switch has total four power supply you may be use uh, options uh, we can get over multiple options where we can get single AC power supply or dual AC power supply to power on the switch and a DC power supply to power out if you want to use a uh, POE line card with this switch. On the feature terms, uh, it supports uh, all layer 3 routing protocols like OSPF, BGP, uh, VRRP. For redundancy purpose, we can use VRRP protocol. Uh, all the L3 routing protocols uh, are supported in this, as well as L2, all the L2 uh, routing protocols, L2, L2 features like VLAN, STP, QNQ, ERPS. So all features are supported uh, in this switch. So this is, uh, we have different architecture where we can deploy this switch in layer 3 architecture, as well as layer 2 architecture. This is the fixed port around a uh, switch that is dis 700g so uh, this is already launched but uh, uh, we have limited uh, deployment on these switches so i will not focus on this part then we have layer 2 managed switch that is a uh, rack mountable 24 port switch but this is also modular switch similar to that f3600 so uh, we have three open slots uh, to insert the module and four 1G SFP uplink port, or we can get 410G SFP uplink port on different variants. Similar to that, uh, power options are there multiple power options dual uh, AC power or dual DC power, and separate DC power need for the PoE deployment. In terms of features, uh, we have uh, all layer 2 features supported uh, in this switch, like we have HTP. MSTP, RSTP, uh, then we have ERPS that, are, that these are the uh, ring protection protocol supported. Then we have uh, VLAN, uh, QNQ, uh, then we have uh, security, uh, security features at 02.1x SSH. Uh, in time synchronization, we have PTP. So all, all uh, these are, uh, these switches are, uh, rack mountable switches are also IP30 metal enclosure. So, uh, and supports a uh, operating temperature up to 70 degree, 70, 75 degree. So, so in terms of 
comparison with the commercial switches it supports up to only 50 degree but these switches has as a uh, higher temperature supports and uh, we can deploy it, uh, it in the outdoor cabinets uh, without any environmental control of the temperature that scenario we can use these switches then we have layer 3 switch dgs f3700 that is a din rail mounting switch so most of the uh, scenario where we need a layer 3 switch with a compact uh, din rail mounting option there we can have option of these switches four port eight port options are there poe non poe and this also comes supports all uh, the software feature specifications in the layer 3 features like ospf bgp vrrp and uh, in layer 2 all the features what we had uh, in layer 2 switches that are supported this comes with a operating temperature minus 20 to 70 degree and ip30 metal housing with a uh, better is it's ip30 metal housing so it's uh, having a better uh, heat dissipation provided through this metal enclosure then this is our popular uh, most popular series is DGS F3000 series that is a layer 2 series because uh, in industry maybe in customer deployment customer use the core switch as a commercial switches but uh, in the uh, access switches customer need to deploy higher temperature support switches then they go for the L2 switches and that is access switches always are L2 switches so this is a DGS F3000 series which comes with a 4 1G or 10G uplink options with different uh, downlink ports options 4 port, 8 port, uh, 12 port, POE, non POE options are there. Maximum 8 port POE we can get uh, in this series. In terms of features, all layer 2 features uh, are supported. We can get uh, uh, VLAN configuration options, uh, ring protection options, security features. Uh, most of the uh, standards protocols uh, in layer 2 all, all are supported with all the certification that, that we have on this product. Then uh, DIS300 is also one of the uh, gigabit uh, layer 2 industrial switches. So uh, I will not focus on this more. This is also DIS 200G series, which is a layer 2 switches. But it is not focused uh, on this series. Then we have a DS F3200 series, which is a 10 by 100 <coughs> Ethernet uh, switches, which comes with the option of 4 port, 8 port, 12 port, and uh, POE, non POE models are there. With a this switches having comes with four uh, combo port option in the uplinks. So we can get a, a copper or fiber, either any of the use ports we can be used over here. And uh, these switches means as, as these are 10 by 100 Mbps port speed supported. So these are mostly deployed in the uh, IP surveillance CCTV projects where the cameras are uh, having the LAN port of port speed of 100 Mbps. So wherever there is a surveillance project and we need uh, and customer need a industrial switch, then in terms of cost consideration, lower cost, we can suggest a 10 by 100 Mbps Ethernet switches, that is DSF 3200 series. So though it is a 10 by 100, but in terms of feature, it's having all the equivalent feature like which uh, our DGSF 3000 series, which is a layer two feature supported in this series also. Same, all similar features are supported. These are unmanaged switches. So we have four port option, eight port options with two uplink ports, uh, DIS 100G, TNS and DIR 100GS. So this, this, this is having temperature support up to 65 degrees, 60 to 65 degree. So these are unmanaged switches uh, which can be used in the uh, customer network but uh, as these are the uh, unmanaged we, ca we cannot configure it or we cannot control we cannot troubleshoot on these switches so uh, whenever these switches are deployed these are under, under the standalone modes so we have to consider that uh, the, the, the network uh, deployment 
uh, having a limited access nodes there only we have to suggest uh, dis 100 g unmanaged switches else we re always recommend to go with the managed switches so i have a better control on the network performance and network monitoring from the centralized uh, network administrator So this is also one of uh, DI, DGS F1000 unmanaged switches, which comes with four port or five port POE non POE options with one or two uplink SFP ports, similar to the DI100. This is also unmanaged switch 10 by 100. Then we have media converters. So as I told, we have uh, fiber to when whenever there is a requirement of fiber to copper conversion we have to deploy the media converter so in the uh, industrial deployment only there is only few few or one or two actually two points need to be connect uh, on the copper on the long distance then we have to go with the media converter so we have uh, multi mode single mode and uh, sap slot media converter so we can uh, get this uh, media converter uh, operate up to minus 20 to 70 degree operating temperature so in ideal commercial media converters work only up to 50 degree so ye, these media converters can sustain operating temperature up to 70 degree so this is the uh, uh, racks which we can use for the outdoor installation so uh, i had just I want to highlight over here that these are the uh, outdoor cabinets where these switch switches can be deployed and uh, the size uh, whatever we have available with the dealing so this wall at pole mount uh, base uh, racks are there so these are uh, ip55 outdoor racks so we always recommend to use a ip54 or 55 outdoor racks to uh, installation uh, uh, for the industrial switches because uh, with the proper ventilation because uh, if we go with the ip65 or 66 so the there may be the uh, uh, outside temperature is a 50 degree or the inside temperature of the um, rack may go 10 or 15 degrees higher so so to avoid uh, uh, the conjunction of the air, we always recommend to use a ventilation, but it should be a protected on the rain, water and dust, rain, water, dust and sun. So I, we recommend that we should always go for the IP54, IP55 racks. So in the next slide, we have a smart rack enclosure also. So if, if there is a requirement of the outdoor cabinet with a smart rack sensor, smart, smart rack can be an option where control environment can be provided through the smart smart rack at the outdoor. So we don't, uh, in the rack itself, we have uh, uh, intelligent uh, and precision AC, AC cooling option is there. We have UPS mounting option is there. So we have biometric, we have a temperature monitoring, uh, digital monitor meter over here. So these, these are the outdoor racks. So, but it is having a smartness. So that we don't need a complete uh, control environment need to build. The rack itself control the uh, inside the con uh, temperature, control the environment inside the rack. So this is also these options also are uh, recommended to use whenever we deploy the outdoor solutions. Then the base solution practice. So as I told, we should use a rack that is IP54, 55, with the proper ventilation should be there. Then with the outdoors uh, industrial switches, we we should always offer a uh, SFTP cables, not we 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 recommend general practices customer go for the lower cost stp cables and all but we always recommend to go with the sftp cables because uh, as as the, there will be the uh, uh, cables are explored explode uh, to the open environment 
there may be the um, uh, environmental effect on the cable as well as there may be uh, surge uh, can in incurred in this uh, cable so to uh, to get a pro better protection we always recommend to go with the sftp cable and it should be properly grounded uh with the sftp con uh, connectors stb connectors so third point is uh, all the switches whichever what whichever they offer in the outdoor solution should be properly grounded because there 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 uh, uh, as there may be the chances of the uh, surge to be induced in the from the outside so that that surge should be grounded so that it the switch get pro, uh, switch get protected so there will be one screw on the switch body so that should be grounded to the uh, outdoor through through the outdoor rack to the uh, earthing to be protected to the grounding so it is always recommended to the to a, must have a grounding done because most of the cases we got a complaint that so we though we have uh, deployed a uh, industrial switches uh, still our uh, network is down but this happens because there is a wrong installation has been done those which supports a, a higher operating temperature higher surge protections but you should always uh, do the whatever the best practice scenario during the installation then about the pv deliveries as we have discussed that there there, there will be uh, the ieee standard 8023 af and et standard so uh, though the standard gives a 15.4 watt and 30 watt maximum power delivery uh, on the switch port and on the pd device but the actual power received at the pd is is less than what the standard is so it it, it may be go maximum up to 25.5 watt only so we should always understand what the power requirement and what what the poe budget of the switch so where when we are designing a solution so we should always give some buffer 10% 20% poe budget x uh, buffer uh, in terms of uh, designing so that uh, it will be not get a customer will not get a network uh, block uh, breakdown issues because this because the, as these switches are deployed in the outdoor environment due to sometimes something temperature uh, high uh, high rise there may be some fluctuation in the in the power consumption or power uh, source of the switch so maybe the pd device will not get the power if you are not done any uh, cabling structure cabling work properly on the side so to reduce the uh, reduce this chances we should do the recommended practice of the installation of the cable which are uh, uh, laid on the site then always recommend to go with the instruction manual whenever you do the installation please refer all the instruction manual uh, also i want to highlight over here is uh, about the surge protection protector so uh, though the switch having internal surge protection uh, having up to kv up or some some more seven six kv but still as it is a outdoor uh, deployments uh, most of the time the surge generated is higher than 10 kv so we recommend it to use a uh, surge protector at the in a pair at the at the pd end as well as the switch end so if the surge is induced in the cable so it will transfer it will travel to both the ways both to the it will it may be damage to camera as well as switch port so to avoid this we recommend and recommend always recommend to use a surge protector in a pair at the outdoor installation at each point each, each before each pd device and each each uh, connected port end so these are the best uh, solution practices uh, which we can recommend to the uh, our partners and customers then uh, what are you worrying on of so we have about the performance we have uh, tally report so that is the third party tally report so so to explain on this i will uh, suggest uh, uh, sunil sir to take on the list last slide and uh, if you have any question then we can discuss after this after this slide 
Yeah, thanks, Ujwal. Uh, and uh, I have just to uh, tell you, I have already replied to Ravi, I have replied to Shiva. There are queries which has been asked uh, during the session by Kushal Verma, Shiva Rama. So many people are asking queries, and I will uh, encourage uh, if you still have any queries, you can please uh, go ahead and type it there. Apart from that, uh, this slide talks about actually uh, what are you worrying of? Means uh, like if you talk, if you are worrying of performance, if you are worrying about experience, we have uh, if you are worrying about cost, then I I would say uh, I I would urge that you should not worry about any any such thing. If you talk about performance, yes, you can always go to the Tolly website, which evaluate uh, multiple OEMs. Okay, and there you will find the link. How the link is comparable with all other OEMs? You will find it performance reports on Tolly. If you talk about experience, if the link has 35 years of which experience in the in deployment, industry deployment, in future uh, in the innovation, you know in. Uh, in the market, we are there since 35 years and we have very good partner bases like you. They are very good experience. We have good, very good case studies, which uh, uh, which is definitely, uh, apart from that, we have our own futuristic approach with the uh, R&D center at Hyderabad, which is team F1. In case of any any development, in case of any uh, future design or innovation, we are, we are always, uh, our R&D is always there to help you out. Apart from that, if you talk about industry certification, then UL, EDL, ROHS, Edition, EMI, EMC, NEMA, TS2, all standard certification you will find along with the DLINK because DLINK is a global MNC and it's a, it's a brand 35 years old. It supports all industry standard certification across the world. Apart from that, uh, if you talk about uh, the cost, we are definitely a very good. Uh, uh, we have very good cost optimizers and it will help you to support uh, lowering your BOQ uh, with the future rich solutions that uh, Deering supports. We uh, throughout the channel, throughout the uh, throughout this presentation, we learn about Deering uh, uh, product portfolio, Deering uh, solutions, Deering presence in the in smart cities, in uh, how Deering is supporting today's trends. That all we talk about. Okay, so if we talk about uh, uh, security, uh, don't worry about this. Drink OS is 100% secure. We have good certification. We have, uh, IP, we are, uh, if you talk about future stick, we are IPv6 ready. So the, the, there is no need to worry about uh, anything. You blindly uh, can blindly trust us and uh, we, we are there to deliver. We are there to help you out. We all are your extended hand to support you uh, throughout the project end to end. And uh, you can definitely trust us. Apart from that, if you have uh, any queries now, since there is a big time, uh, sorry, sorry, since there is a time, uh, we need to wind up uh, this session. And uh, you can always, uh, you can always write us, write your queries. You can, uh, if it's a sales related queries, you can, you can always write us on sales at the rate in dot dot com. Any uh, any queries uh, uh, or anything that you want to ask us? I'm here for uh, five ten minutes. You can always uh, call me or you can always call us. Uh, call us. Uh, thank you, Mesh. Thank you, Raj Kumar. Good. Dilling is uh, regularly attending uh, arranging such webinars. Okay, so to educate our partners, to educate our, uh, to educate uh, the partners like you, you, uh, I would uh, urge you to take the full benefit of it. And if you have any queries, you can always revert us. I can see there are many, uh, many partners like Sintel, like Team Computers, uh, Team One. I can see those uh, many our regular interaction, the partners to whom we are actually interacting. So it's a good session. Basically, you can always uh, give your uh, uh, respond to your queries. I am ending up this session, winding up the session, and thank you very much once again for attending the session. Thank you, Ujwal, and thank you, Divya, for being us, being with us for the session. Thank you, all of us again. Bye.